Hey guys, it's Jessica and today we are going to talk about my favorite drugstore products from the entire year of 2018. These are products I have loved for quite some time and they have just kind of withstood the test of time. And for me, what that truly means is I try a lot of products throughout the year and these are the ones that continued to stand out, that I continued to reach for, that I loved. This really was purely based on what products I loved throughout the year, regardless of when I discovered them, when they came out, things like that, if that makes sense. So. Um, I put all of these on my face today. I'm wearing only drugstore on my face, nothing more. And I'm excited to show you me applying these as I tell you about the products. So you get to see every single one in action. Before we get into it, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button so that you see more of my makeup review videos throughout all of 2019. I was gonna say throughout more of 2019. I guess that makes sense too. Anyway, other than that, let's get into it. Oh my gosh. These okay. I call the Jammy Awards because my screen name on YouTube was Jam Beauty 89 and so i've kind of kept that but now my regular name is a part of it so i felt like the jammy awards they were like the grammys and i remember long ago when i first started this i was inspired by emily noel who did her emily awards at the time so shout out to emily because i freaking love her and she inspires me in so many ways she's done her own emily awards she like split it up and did like tons of videos which was so much fun to watch all through december so i'll link her channel you should definitely check it out now tons of people do this which is great because my watch later playlist is filled with these videos like best of 2018 so i'm doing drugstore today i'll be filming the high-end version as well this week so stay tuned for that it'll be up very very soon and uh yeah i if you'd be interested in seeing like a worst of 2018 video i like watching those let me know i have quite a few products in mind to mention of course a lot of them i've already gotten rid of so but i already have them like in a list so if you'd be interested let me know and i can definitely film that one too all right jessica gosh get started so we are going to kick off the jammies of 2018 with this spray. I've mentioned this a lot, even in our Vlogmas videos. It's the Pixie Vitamin Wake Up Mist. Now I know you're probably thinking, hold, pump the brakes, Jess. That's not drugstore. It's just right in the middle. And I didn't really know where to put it because I already had another one for high end. And I was like, well, it price wise, Pixie sold at Target, you can buy it online. It really is priced right in the center above drugstore, but below like high end Sephora kinds of brands. So I didn't know where to put this guy. So I figured I would toss it into this one. You can be mad at me if you want, but um, it's the only Pixie product I have in here. It's the Vitamin Wake Up Mist. It has orange blossom, citrus extracts. I like to spray this on my naked face. Right when I sit down to get ready, I will grab this. I'll spritz it all over my face. It takes about a minute to dry. It's really, really obviously wet. I feel like it just kind of wakes my skin up for the day. I don't use this at night. Obviously, it's called the wake up mist. I don't think it's meant to be used at night. But I kind of treat it as sort of like an essence, if you will. Something I'm kind of getting into my skin, some good stuff. Now, as I've mentioned anytime I've talked about this, if you are sensitive to like citrus extracts, I would stay away because obviously that's what this is based around. But if you're not, I really, really like it. It's paraben free, cruelty free. And the only thing I wish was different about this, because I think the packaging is beautiful, I wish the spritzer wasn't so freaking aggressive. See, that didn't seem that bad, but when you're spraying it on your face, you'll know what I mean. It's like, ch -ch -ch -ch. like I can't not flinch my eyes when I spray it. But regardless of that, I really love it. I just wish they would improve their nozzle. Pixie, if you're watching, please fix your nozzles because people love your sprays, but they hate the nozzle, so then they stop using it. Anyway, I highly recommend. Of course, I'll link all the products I mentioned, but I'm always up front. Those are affiliate links, so if you don't want to click that link, then please feel free to search them on your own. It takes me some time to make those links, you guys. Like, that is no joke. I'm just being very silly today. I feel very silly. I figured out some of the settings on my camera, so I feel like, who's this girl? <laughs> Actually, Tyler figured it out. Fine, fine. I did have a few ties, and I was gonna say, no, Jessica, you gotta pick one, but I was like, but I can't pick one. I genuinely couldn't. So there are a couple ties in here. I'm gonna show you both. So the primer I put on my skin today, and I actually didn't even put a moisturizer on today. I forgot. I usually put on, I'll spray that essence on, put a moisturizer on, then the primer. I just forgot and I just put this on. I feel like my skin looks nice and hydrated, so there you go. This is the CoverGirl True Blend Base Business Skin Primer, and it's the illuminating one. I've tried all of the ones they have in this range, and I like the illuminating one the best. I feel like it's just, it gives your skin the right amount of glow. It's just kind of like this golden beige tone but it becomes translucent once you blend it onto your skin, so I think anyone could use this, any skin tone. But it adds this sheen that doesn't include any glitter, it doesn't have actual shimmer, but it's just this glow. And I feel like sometimes when I've tried drugstore 
illuminating primers, sometimes they'll have that glitter in it. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not what I want. I like glitter, but I don't necessarily want it all over my face. Um, and I, so I just feel like good illuminating primers are harder to find in the drugstore. And this one, the more I've used it, the more it's grown on me. Cause I feel like when I was first using it, I'm like, oh, it's pretty good. I like it. And then I'd use it more. I'm like, actually it's pretty decent. But by the end of this year, I used it a lot. And I realized, you know what? I actually think that's very good. <laughs> so I recommend it. ET Doves, I'm drinking the LaCroix, uh, Crayon Raspberry. Um, this might be one of my favorite flavors. I got it in like a bulk pack at Costco. There were like four flavors and I was like, oh, I'll try it. Crayon Raspberry is like rocking my world a little bit, just a little bit. So next step on my face was foundation. So I have a BB cream dimension <laughs> that you can guess what it is. Uh, and then I have two foundations. So what I ended up putting on my face, I'll show you first. So this is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. It's a luminous makeup, nude skin feel is how it's described. Um, it's got SPF of 18. Obviously you'd want more sunscreen than that. I forgot to put on sunscreen too. Well, you're just not on your game today, Jess. First of all, I know the packaging, right? Like why is this the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my entire life? Like it's like Charlotte Tilbury level of beautiful packaging. Maybe that's what they were going for. It's nice glass bottle, really nice pump. Like everything about this is so luxurious and high end. So I'm so glad that I like it. Cause if I had tried it and been like, oh man, it sucks. I would have been so sad. Cause I'm like, but the bottle's so pretty. So this is definitely a light to medium coverage, probably really just medium. I don't think you can get full, full coverage with this, which is fine. I'm usually not opting for that because I feel like it just ends up making me look older. So like, sure, from three feet away, my skin might look flawless, but the second you like stand to talk to me, I look older than I am when I'm wearing like a high, high coverage. So I'm like, you know, I don't think I really need that. Um, so I think that this is just a really pretty, pretty skin-like foundation. I did a top five of my favorite foundations when it comes to ones that just look like skin because that's pretty much always what I opt for. Um, ones that just look really good in person that don't look like you're wearing makeup. I can link that video below because I still stand by everything I said and you're going to see some repeats here. But, um, I just, I highly recommend this. I think this is beautiful. I wish the shade range were a little bit better because I don't have a perfect shade in this, but I also know that people on either end definitely don't have a shade in this. So I wish they would expand it because I think, I'm assuming this is one of their better sellers. I don't know. Um, but I wear the shade just for reference. If you're curious, I have the lightest shade. And I'm definitely not as fair as you can get. So uh, porcelain L1. Well, I'm assuming that's the lightest shade. So I feel like it's just slightly yellow. Sometimes I'll mix it, but I wore it alone today. And I do, you know, I'm wearing a turtleneck. So you can't see that it really is too yellow for me. You know what I mean? But I just love it so much. So highly recommend this one. This is going to be a long video, guys. Strap in. Next one is this Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation. Now, I didn't apply this one today, but I can link a video where I did apply it. I was comparing this as a dupe to the $120 La Mer foundation that I also own. That foundation I think is nice. It makes my skin look nice. I don't think any foundation is worth $120. There are plenty of, I don't really reach for the La Mer one that often. So if that tells you anything, I reach for this one more often. I think it looks a little bit more skin-like on the skin, but it's so similar to that one, you guys. I did a side-by-side -side in that video, so you can kind of guess, like, which one do you think is the La Mer? Which one do you think is the Physician's Formula? It's so impossible to tell. And then I did a wear test, and they were, like, the same by the end of the day. So I would say spend your money on this. Again, I wish they had a better shade range. Yeah, noticing a pattern. Um, but I actually really like this packaging. I don't know what I'm going to do at the end. I might have to just try to, like, pour it out. But I actually don't mind the doe foot. I know some people are grossed out by it, but I'm like, it's really not that different than like a concealer doe foot that you're putting on your eyes and you're dipping back in. Same with lip gloss. So it doesn't bother me. But again, this is like a medium coverage foundation. You can build it up a little bit, but again, I don't think it's a full coverage, but I think it looks healthy on the skin, hence the name, the healthy foundation. Um, and it just makes my skin look brighter, more even. It wears really well throughout the day. I hate the freaking smell of this. I meant to mention this in that video. The smell of this and La Mer, they both smell awful. They have the strongest smells. Why? Why? But this one really, like, I can smell it. When I'm applying it, I'm like, ugh, ugh. But it's, it looks so good. Next one, you could have guessed, so I'll only touch on this for a second. My favorite BB cream I've ever tried, ever, in my entire time testing out makeup, the five and a half years I've been on YouTube, this is the best BB cream I've come across. And it really is drugstore priced. So let me explain myself. This is the Misha BB cream. Misha's the brand. They have, again, a terrible shade range and they're all very gray. And I know that kind of turns people off, but keep in mind that this is an Asian beauty brand 
And so neutral is kind of what most Asian BB creams tend to just run with. They they just tend to be more gray tone. Now, for me that works because I really do have more of a neutral skin tone. For the longest time I struggled, I'm like, I think I'm warm. And then I'm like, no, I'm not warm. And then I'm like, well, I think I'm cool. I've realized I really am just neutral and I think that's why it's been such a struggle for me. So these gray tones, sometimes I'll mix this with like, like that flower beauty one. Any foundation that's too yellow, I'll mix one of these with and it's like the perfect neutral shade. Don't be scared when you're putting this on, if you own it or you're going to buy it, it's going to look grayer than you think. But once you put it on, I'm telling you like three minutes pass and it's like something magical happens and it like sinks into your skin and it somehow works. I can't explain it. If any of you guys have tried it and you had that same experience I'm describing, let me know because I wanna make sure I'm not crazy you're than I already know that I am. But I have number 23. I've kind of realized it's a little too dark, so then I have number 21. Um, I'll mix these, I'll mix 21 with other things, I'll wear them both alone. I think 21's maybe slightly closer, so if you're near me, probably out for 21. Let me show you kind of a shade swatch. Um, it's got a pump, it's actually a squeezy tube with a pump. Um, the reason I'm including this in drugstore, because I'm sure some of you guys are like, Jessica, that is high end, I know. But you can buy this on Amazon and it is like 12 bucks. So I'm like, I'm considering that drugstore, I don't care. Because, just because. That's 21, that's 23. You'll see how like I'll mix the edge here. I'll mix the edge and I feel like that is truly my perfect tone, but there is no 22. So anyway, I think these are incredible. The coverage is unbelievable for BB cream. It's got great skincare in it. It's got SPF of like, yeah, 42. Like. It has so much good crap in this stuff and the fact that you can get on Amazon for like 12 bucks is unbelievable. A lot of you guys have bought them on Amazon. You've told me, Jessica, it's the same thing. It's the real deal. So I'm trusting you guys and that's why I'm saying check it out on Amazon. I ended up buying number 21 actually on the Misha Beauty website and it was like double the price. So that's something to keep in mind. I would try it on Amazon. These are incredible, incredible, incredible. There's a reason I can't stop talking about them and there's a reason I use them pretty much every day. And application wise, I just use my hands. I just apply it with my fingers and then if there's like little areas that maybe need a little more blending, I'll grab my sponge and maybe do that or even a brush. Um, but honestly, it's beautiful with your fingers. It's so quick to put on. So concealer, again, I have a tie. But these are very different concealers so I felt okay talking about it. <laughs> um, so the first one is another Flower Beauty one. This was like my year of discovering Flower Beauty's amazing face products. Um, this is their Light Illusion Concealer. Now, I know a lot of people have used this and they're like, Jessica, I don't get it. Like, why do you like it? This is one of those concealers that is definitely going to crease. It's a very moisturizing concealer. But there's something about the way it ends up looking on my skin that it's like moisturizing. It never looks dry and crepey. Like, it just looks like healthy, youthful, brightened skin. So on my under eye, I'm like, yes, but I do have to put a powder on top of this to set it, period. I'll tell you what powder I used here in a second for my under eye today. So I love this, again, this is a very neutral tone, the specific one I have. I don't know if all of them are this neutral, but this is light one, two, fair. And it's kind of darker than a lot of the concealers I typically use, but I kind of like that because again, I feel like that just kind of helps to make everything look a little more seamless. You know, I don't necessarily love a super brightened under eye because on me, I just, I don't know. You know, we all have our own tastes and what we like on ourselves and I just, I feel like sometimes that almost ages me as well. So I love this stuff. It's super creamy and moisturizing. I think I really like the NARS uh, creamy concealer, but this one is way creamier, like way creamier. And frankly, if I were looking at both of them and deciding which one to keep forever, I would pick this one. The other concealer always looks so weird in the bottle. I've used a lot of it up. It's the Catrice Liquid Camouflage Concealer. Um, this stuff is also, of course, really inexpensive, just a standard doe foot. This stuff is a thinner formula and a little bit drier than the flower one. But this stuff freaking stays in place. Like this is a workhorse concealer. And so my favorite way is to just mix these two. So I'll show you me applying both of these right now. I like to lay down the flower one really fast and then put little dots of the Catrice one. And when you they mix together, the Catrice one helps it to all stay in place and not move throughout the day. But then the flower one kind of neutralizes it and keeps it moisturizing. It's like the best combo. Can I like get these two brands to collaborate and make a concealer mixing these two formulas? Cause that would be like, oh my gosh. Like that makes my heart go pitter 
patter. So I love these. The Catrice one, again, was one that grew on me over the year because I liked it when I first tried it, but the more I use it, I'm like, dang, like this really does stay in place, but it's not like thick and goopy. It's not like, it's just really good. So don't feel like you have to mix these because they're both great on their own. This one is higher coverage, stays in place throughout the day. I still set it with a powder, but I don't think you have to. Flower One, really moisturizing, beautiful. You can kind of tap it in with your fingers if you want, but you do want to set it unless you just tapped a really light amount and you totally avoided your fine lines somehow. But I love them both. And obviously there are plenty of times that I put the Flower Beauty one on and don't set it because I'm just throwing something on real fast, tapping it in. But really throughout the day, I might just use my fingers to kind of tap it in a little bit and it's fine. It's not like it's just gonna slide all the way off your face, but I just like to set it with powder. It certainly looks better. Brows. Say it with me, everyone. My favorite brow product for 2018 is the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil, or whatever they're calling it now. It's this very standard thin brow pencil. I use the shade Soft Brown. It has a really thin, wonderful spoolie on the other end. It's retractable. I don't know what else to say about it. There's something about it that it has helped me shape my brows so much better than they used to be. They're thicker than they used to be and nothing's changed. Like I didn't go get my brows microblade. I did. It's just that I started using this and there's something about the fine tip and the shade is just right for me in my opinion that I could really kind of add a little bit where I needed to add a little bit. I love this stuff. I feel like it has completely changed the game. I literally have not reached for another brow product since owning this. I've tried a couple like CoverGirl's Brow Pomade I think is pretty darn good too. I've tried some here and there, but this is the one that I'm like, I'm getting ready. Where's my CoverGirl brow pump? You know what I mean? Like I'm not messing around. So I love it. I know, I mean, NYX makes an ultra fine one. Obviously the Anastasia one's more expensive. They're all good. None of them are terrible. And I do think this one, like I'll typically go back in after I've done my eyeshadow and touch up a little bit right underneath. Cause I feel like a little bit of it will wipe away. So if you want to put a brow gel in it, you certainly can and that will help. But it doesn't bother me because I just think everything else about it is so perfect that I just can't stop using it. The blush I use today, where is it? Is a cream blush. And it's the only blush I'm gonna mention in this video because I literally looked at my blush short and I was like, this is the only one that I have reached for so much this year that I'm like, I saw it and thought, well, of course that's gonna be the one. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll include a powder blush, but I'm like, none of them, none of them, I thought there were plenty of great ones. Like I like the Flower Beauty ones. I think those are beautiful. I like the Catrice strobing blushes. There's plenty that I loved, but this is like 10 tiers above that and how much I've used and loved this. If you are scared to use cream blush or liquid blush, don't be. I was too, I still am. But there's something about this formula that you blend a little bit on your hand. I feel like I've talked about this a lot recently, so sorry if I sound like a broken record to those that like watch a lot of my videos. But it's such a forgiving formula where I'll grab my sponge, I'll tap a little bit onto it, and then tap it into my cheek area where I would typically apply powder blush. And it's so easy. I mean, it doesn't look like weird and patchy. It doesn't, and it wears really well throughout the day. I mean, this product continually impresses me. This shade Pinched, I know, continues to be sold out. I can't stop recommending it, but I love it. Hopefully it's in stock or you can find it maybe in an actual store. Where is Flower Beauty? So is Flower Beauty still sold at Walmart? I remember hearing a long time ago, I just haven't investigated. I remember hearing a long time ago that they weren't gonna be sold there anymore. Is that true or was that true or was that completely made up? I never really followed up on it, but I always buy Flower Beauty online. I love this. I know they're sold at Ulta online and this shade is the bomb, but they have many other shades. They're all beautiful and they all do the same thing. They're all forgiving. So don't feel like you have to get this shade. There's another light pink if you're near my skin tone, but they also have beautiful deep colors. I love it so much. So this, this was like a product that changed the game for me when it came to liquid blushes because I didn't really care about them until this. And also it can look really like pretty, you know what I mean? Obviously I have a highlighter up here, but even without it, it can look just really glowy and gorgeous on its own. It doesn't, you know, if you've got peach fuzz on your face, it doesn't emphasize that. It's just gorgeous. My next favorite is a powder. And again, I was like, okay, pressed powder, loose powder. 
I didn't want to force anything. Like if I did not have a favorite for something, I wasn't going to just grab one just for the sake of having one. I'm like, no, I really want it to be one that's like made it to the top. So it's the Maybelline Fit Me loose powder. Honestly, this is the only loose powder I use. <laughs> I don't even use high-end ones anymore. I have a whole drawer of them. I don't use them because this one not only kind of perfects the area, and I don't use this every day, but like when I'm filming, I definitely use it. And then other days, if we're going out and I'm like, I really want that flawless kind of look, this is what I grab for because it puts a layer of powder on that just not only mattifies the area enough, but it still allows for your skin to shine through. So I feel like I still have a glow Again, I put highlighter on top, but I feel like even on my forehead, I still have like life in it. How is it doing that? Um, and not only that, but it adds coverage. So like my nose, for example, it has solved the problem of redness on my nose. Now, if I'm itching my nose like crazy, the redness is gonna come through. I'm going to be wiping away. But for every day, like every once in a while, kind of, you know, wipe my nose, it's fine. And I just think this stuff is incredible. I know so many people love this. It's like a holy grail. It has become a holy grail for me and I'm so surprised. I wear the shade 10 Fair Light. I like to apply it with a velour puff. This is a Laura Mercier one that's like 15 bucks. You can buy beautiful three packs on Amazon. In fact, I have one in my cart right now to try out um, that are the exact same thing. And actually they're prettier because instead of saying Laura Mercier, they have like a rose gold little thing. But I use this to apply it to my skin and that's how I get that coverage that I want. And then after you've done that, if you want to grab a powder brush and kind of dust off the excess, you can certainly do that. This is also what I used to set my under eye today. And while it's not my favorite under eye setting powder, you'll have to wait for the high-end video to find that one out. You probably already know. But um, I, my favorite under eye setting powder is a high-end one that you'll see. But I used it today and I think it still does a nice job, but certainly if you get close, it can look crepey in that area, more so than the other powder does. So my favorite lip balm of the year, and I have a lip scrub as well, is from Milani. So this is the Milani Keep It Sweet Sugar Lip Scrub. This stuff smells like vanilla, wonderful like frosting. It is the best. It reminds me of my childhood for some reason. I love putting this sugar scrub on my lips. I just kind of rub it in with my middle finger all over for about 30 seconds, maybe even less. And then I'll just wipe it off with like a washcloth or something, whatever you have on hand. And then I'll follow it up with my favorite lip balm. And that's the Milani Keep It Smooth Lux Lip Treatment. This stuff is crazy. Again, that same amazing vanilla smell but it's so creamy, you just need a thin layer and it's so moisturizing. And again, the packaging of these is so beautiful. These are incredible. Again, I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. Now, I had a tough time with lip balms because I also really like the Physicians Formula Organic Wear Lip Treatment. That stuff is incredible. Totally a dupe for the sugar lip treatments. Um, and I had a few others that I'm like, I, I, there's so much I love, but some of them I discovered very recently and I was like, well, I don't want to mention those in this year-long favorites, but these, ooh. So the sponge I use to apply my foundation, my favorite beauty tool is the L'Oreal sponge. Um, I will say this, every time I buy a new one, cause I've probably gone through like 10 of these, it's, I like it better than the beauty blender. I like, I've tried all of it. I like the flower beauty sponge. That was like a close, but this one definitely wins for me. I know a lot of people have tried it and they're like, I don't get it. I don't like it. I think it takes a couple of uses. Cause like I had just opened this one maybe a week, week and a half ago. And when I first used it, I got it wet, you know, maybe cleaned it a bit and then had it ready to go. I felt, I'm like, what in the world? Like it's, it's too dense. Like it's not working the way I'm used to mine working. But after I used it about three or four times and washed it in between, just because, you know, I was trying to get it to the point that I'm explaining, it finally feels the way I'm used to it. So I feel like it takes like three or four washes to get it to that really wonderful place. So if you've tried one, you only tried it a couple times, keep going, keep trying it because I'm telling you there's something about it. It's not as bouncy as the Beauty Blender, but it just is so flawless to me. I love it so much. There's a reason I'm not opting. Now there is one Beauty Blender I'm going to mention, a very specific one that I really liked. I'll mention in the high-end one that can compare to this, but this one's so much cheaper. Oh my gosh, I love it. Which is good because my dog Pinocchio continually steals my sponges, so it's probably good like that I'm not spending $20 on each one because he gets them and tears them up. And then I'm like, well, might as well have like lit that $20 on fire because I used that thing once. So the highlighter I use today is the Catrice Highlighting Powder. Ooh, this stuff is amazing. It's in the shade Champagne Campaign. You will only like this highlighter if you like a more subtle understated highlighter. If you are into like the crazy frosty, you know, 
see it from space kind you're not gonna like this you'll probably try it and be like why does she like this and then toss it this stuff is exactly my kind of highlight it definitely has some glow to it but it just ends up looking so perfect on my skin like i feel like i can build it up but like i even took some of this on my finger and kind of tapped it into this region just to add a little bit of glow up there and i'm like see that looks so pretty i tapped it onto my brow bone i feel like that looks pretty just it's so versatile it's so beautiful it's right in between you can't see it and like crazy crazy highlight it's like right in the middle and that's why i love this there was another more rosy tone one i liked but this was the one that for me and my skin tone really stood out um so again if you know you like highlighters like i like them i really think you're gonna like this dig your brush in there get past the top layer because i do feel like um right off the bat you're gonna be like eh, it's okay but like really get in there and ooh. So bronzer, I literally was just not going to have a bronzer for this video, but I pulled this one out because I just recently said in a vlog, was like, whoa, I forgot how good this was. And I liked it in the first half of the year, but I was like, but I haven't used it in like five months. So I'm like, does it even count? Like, should I even include it? But I figured, you know what? This is the only drugstore bronzer I really, really like. So I'm going to mention it anyway. And it's the number seven bronzer in the shade Maple. I've had this for quite a while. I had a few shades, but I finally landed on Maple. I think that's the right shade for me. The packaging is really, really pretty. Um, I think it's just a great bronzer, you guys. It can pack a decent amount of punch, but it's not so much that it's like, whoa. Now, I was mentioning in a Vlogmas, like, I have a certain brush I just recently got, and it really digs in there. And it was, I literally applied it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, that was way too much. But with really most brushes, this is just going to deposit the right amount of color. I have it on my face today, but I didn't end up filming it because I wasn't sure that I was even going to mention this. So anyway, I really, really like it. It's a great everyday bronzer. They have different shades, which is nice. Not every company comes out with different shades of bronzers. And even the packaging is pretty. So there you go. Number seven, I usually buy at Target. And if you're more fair, this is a lighter shade of a bronzer, which I appreciate. So you might really like it. On my eyes today, my favorite eye primer. And again, this was a toss up because there are quite a few I discovered this year from the drugstore that I loved. I loved the Ulta Beauty matte eye primer. I loved the Essence I Love Color. I ended up going with this one, the Catrice Prime and Fine Brightening Eyeshadow Base. I really like this. It has a doe foot applicator. It's a white tone. It reminds me so much of the Smashbox photo primer, like eyelid primer that actually is my favorite eye primer in the high-end category. They are so similar, you guys, like total dupes for each other. But I think it holds onto the shadow really well. I don't notice creasing and I feel like it makes the shadows look really nice. So I think it's a great price point as well, but I just generally think this is a good eye primer. The drugstore eyeshadow palette that I picked was the Milani Bold Obsessions. I have the must, uh, most loved mattes as well. It looks like this, but I honestly didn't reach for that this one as much as the Bold Obsessions one. And that would be because the Bold Obsession has both shimmer and matte. I pretty much always wear a shimmer on my eyelid. And so it's kind of one of those things that I'm like, I would have to, it's gotta be this one. The packaging is amazing. It's $20 regular priced, but you can get it for 15 on Walmart's website. So again, I'll link it. Um, and I'm sure you at Walmart's actual store, but it's got a good mix of like six mattes, six shimmers. They're really pigmented. They're so wonderful. And actually the top row of mattes here, I use every single day. I feel like those actually aren't quite as pigmented, but it makes blending really easy because I'm using those typically as more of like a blending buffer color. So I don't necessarily need them to be crazy punchy and it's perfect for me. So if you're like me and you're not like, I'm not a makeup artist, I just need things to work the way I need them to work. Those work the way I want them to work. So, but the shimmers are crazy. There's this gold in the middle that is like this insane, like almost pressed pigment kind of gold. Oh my gosh. And then they have these beautiful bold colors. It's a great mix of color. I mean, this palette is incredible. Like I feel when I'm using this, I feel like I'm using a high end palette. I don't feel like, oh, this is just like a $5 palette. Of course it's not a $5 palette. It is a little bit pricier, but it had to be the winner. A close runner up was like the CoverGirl ones that I really, really like. I can link those below, um, but the Milani one is better. I think it's, I think it's better quality. So the, my favorite like glitter shimmer top coat kind of an eyeshadow are the ColourPop singles. Y'all, <laughs> I remember when ColourPop was huge like five years ago. Let's all take a moment. And it's still huge today, but like all ColourPop was when they first launched were like these weird, you know, like kind of putty-like shadows that were like, 
they had glitter, but they would actually stay on the eye. And I remember using them a ton when they first came out back when I was living at my parents' house, before I was married, before I was engaged, any of that. I think I was like student teaching at the time. And uh, oh, it's crazy to think like, I had no idea what my life would look like five years in the future. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't have told you where I'd be living, that I wouldn't even be teaching anymore, that I would be married with a kid. Like I could have maybe guessed married, maybe with a kid, I don't know. Regardless, this shadow, I don't even know that they sell this. I really am just using this as the example. I only have two of these. I used to have a lot more, but I recently got back into using this. This is the shade Birthday Girl. Like I said, I don't even know if they still sell this shade, but really any of, they have so many shades just like this and they all perform the same. This one has glitter in it and I love tapping it on my eyelid, especially this like, you know, wintry time. I think glitter looks so pretty on the eyelid. And this is one of the few formulas out there that can have just that pretty amount of glitter that catches the light, but it's not so much. And I can tap it on and the glitter does not go anywhere. It does not get all over my face. It doesn't chunk off later throughout the day and end up like on my cheekbones. No, it stays where you put it. This formula really is like earth shattering. <laughs> and I just forgot how good they are and how cool they are. So I might get maybe a couple more just to play with because I really do love this formula. I've just kind of rediscovered it. Oh my gosh. So that's what I have on my lids today that added like kind of a slight glitter to it. And if you don't know, ColourPop shadows are kind of like a cream shadow, but it's like a cream to powder. It's really odd. And that's why I was saying it's, it's kind of like revolutionary in that way because it's not a powder, but it's definitely not a cream or like a liquid. It's this weird thing in between and it, that's what's making the glitter stay in place. So my favorite eyeliners of the year. And again, like these are all favorites, not just for drugstore, but just favorites generally. I love the Milani eyeliner. It's their stay put waterproof eyeliner. I have this much left. It's a little tiny baby nubbin. I need to buy another one. I have it in the black shade. It's first of all, the packaging is beautiful. It's got the same kind of lid as like the expensive Urban Decay 24-7 ones, but I think these are even better. I mean, at least equal to, but I think they might be better. And they sharpen well. They're really, really soft and creamy. So something to be aware of. I feel like I do have to sharpen it like every other day if I'm using it every day. Um, but I just keep my sharpener handy and that it is what it is, you know? But it's so creamy. You can do the waterline with it and it looks great. I used it today to kind of tight line a little bit thicker than tight line. And it's just so quick and easy to apply. It's so creamy. It stays in place. It's so black. It's got everything you want in an eyeliner. Really. It's so good. So like I said, I'm definitely repurchasing. It's my favorite one. When I run out of this, which I've done multiple times, I'm always like, dang it, I need to get another because none of the other ones like come close to this, to how creamy and black it is. My favorite liquid liner... And this again was a toss up because you guys know I love my NYX Epic Ink Liner. That stuff is very black. It's got a brush tip. It's easy to apply. But I think that this Revolution Renaissance Flick Eyeliner became my favorite. The packaging again, gorgeous. Obviously I'm a sucker for that. I buy mine through Ulta. This is a felt tip. It is the easiest thing to get a winged line. I usually do just a mini wing, so it's nothing, you know, but even that, you know, it does take a little bit of time and like you wanna be using something really pointed and precise to be able to get it to look the way I would like it to look. This does the trick, it's super black. I do feel like I have to replace this one more often than I do the NYX. Like I think the NYX one stays wet longer. <laughs> and I feel like this one, like if I could use the NYX one for three to four months, I feel like I can use this two to three. But honestly, I'm like, I don't really care because it's so good. I'm willing to repurchase it. I like the way the application method is easier. Okay, it's easier. And I think they're both just as black. They're both stay on really well throughout the day. This one just, I think it's easier to use. But please, I already have, I still have two backups of my NYX Epic Ink. I still love that stuff. I will still use it. So it's not like I'm throwing that one in the garbage. It really was a toss up. So my favorite mascara from the drugstore, and I just opened a new one last week and I've been using it all week, all through Christmas as well. So I guess maybe a little over a week. It's the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. This stuff is so good. You guys know I have a very expensive one I also love. And again, that'll be mentioned in my hand. But this one really is so amazing. And when I opened a fresh one, I was like, yes. Like it's just like, Phew. I feel like I can get my lashes curled with it. I can get them fanned out, super black, super curled, like everything. And I know some people have tried this and don't love it and then other people do. It's like a very polarizing mascara. 
it dries out very quickly. So you either buy a new one every other month or you can do all these tricks of squirting things in there or putting it in hot water. Honestly, for me, I'm like, I just end up when they're on sale, I'll buy like four. Like if it's buy one, get one half off at Ulta, I'll literally buy four and be set for quite a while because I love this so much. I really do. And you know, I love that Charlotte Tilbury one. I'm going to buy it again. But this is kind of the one that's my workhorse one that it looks, the end look is probably pretty similar. I think the cover, the Charlotte Tilbury one is like maybe a little bit longer and a little more volumized, but it's so similar. And this one really is so amazing. I love, it's got a very natural brush. Um, it's so good, you guys, it's so good. And I don't notice flaking with this one. One thing I've noticed, you guys know I love the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I opened a new one of that just the other day before I opened this one. And I, within a day, noticed flaking. And I'm like, I don't remember noticing that in the past. So, and it was a brand new one that I was opening. So I don't know, like I have another It Cosmetics Superhero one in backup. And I'm like, well, I don't want to open that one right now and also get that one dried out just to see if it flakes. But when I'm time to, op when it's time for me to open another one, I'll open maybe that next one and see if I also notice flaking. Very weird, but I don't notice flaking with the L'Oreal one. So my first lip product that I want to mention other than the lip balm I already mentioned, is the L'Oreal Colory Shine lip products. I was sent like the entire collection. These are the only two I kept. Glossy Fawn, which is this beautiful kind of brownie nude, and then Shining Peach, which is this beautiful, almost pinkish peach, and it's very light and kind of shiny. These have these really beautiful gloss to them without actually being a lip gloss. So it's like one step below lip gloss. It's really, really pretty. These are like the perfect everyday lip colors. They're perfect work lip colors because they're comfortable. You can reapply. Honestly, you can reapply without a mirror if you're wearing one of these like lighter shades. Glossy Fawn is one of the only nudie brown colors I think I've ever been able to pull off on my lips where I like the way it looks. Um, so if you've been wanting to try kind of a nudie brown, but you feel like everyone you try just does not look good on you, that's how I've always felt. This is the only one I've found that I like the way it looks. Shining Peach is lighter. I think it looks nice. Um, it's not necessarily my favorite shade for every day, but it's really, it really is pretty and it can look really pretty on top of other colors as well. If you wanted to kind of tone it down or add a little bit of light to the center of your bottom lip, it's so beautiful. The packaging of these I think is gorgeous. L'Oreal lately, I can't do their lip sticks because the way they smell makes me sick to my stomach, but their other lip products I think are amazing. I have a few more to mention, but I loved these. Um, another L'Oreal lip product I love are their infallible paint lip products. Do they even still sell these? I think they do. I have the shade Spicy Blush. I also like Nude Star. They're both gorgeous. They're, they're very similar shades. I can't find my Nude Star. They have like a squeezy tube, but then it's a doe foot. And it's kind of like one of those chair doe fits where it kind of has the product in the middle. These are just really comfortable pigmented glosses. I struggle to say gloss because I really don't view these as glosses, but they kind of are. And I actually am not mentioning any other like lip glosses. Again, a runner up would have been the Rimmel like stay glossy type glosses. And I love the shade Blushing Belgraves, but I need to buy a new one. So there we go. Um, because that's like the prettiest, I'll link it below, but I, I don't have it. But I really, I really like this formula. I think that they're comfortable, they're moisturizing. Again, you're not gonna end the day like, ooh, my lips are all dry. No, these are moisturizing. Of course you have to reapply throughout the day, but I love them. And I feel like they tend to make my lips look a little bit plumper. They don't settle into the lines of my lips, which, A plus. So my favorite lip liner, again, L'Oreal. Like, I'm t it's not sponsored by them. It's just that they have some really good stuff. These lip liners are the bomb. These are probably my favorite lip liners of all lip liners. It's the L'Oreal Color Riche Matte Lip Liners. I've got quite a few shades. I have this red one called Matte in Manhattan. I have this pink one called Best Mattes. And then I have this nude one called Matte's It. That's probably my most used one. Um, it is a little deep. I wanna find one that's maybe a little lighter. If you have any recommendations of the L'Oreal one that's maybe lighter than Matte's It, but it is a great, nude, like a staple for your collection. This red, I use all of the time with red lips because these are crazy creamy and pigmented. They stay in place. These are amazing, you guys. So highly recommend if you've not tried them or if you just need a lip liner in one very specific shade, go check this line out because they are kicking my high-end lip liners butts. I don't even have a high-end lip liner winner for that video because these are better. My favorite lipstick is the Revlon Super Lustrous one in the shade Showstopper. This one I discovered, actually it wasn't that long ago. 
I've loved these lipsticks for a long time, but they came and went out of my collection over the years as they got old, or I just had so many and I wasn't reaching for them. But this is one of those lines in the drugstore that's been there for decades and decades and decades. But this shade Showstopper really like took my breath away because it's like a beautiful blue toned red, almost like a rosy red. It's so, it's not what I wear on my lips. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But I think this is so beautiful. I recommend Revlon, their cream lipsticks that are in this uh, super luscious line are my favorites. But this one's one of the mattes and it's one of the few mattes that I really think is creamy. Cause some of their mattes I do think they can be, it just depends on the shade. But I love this. A long, long time ago, I did a video swatching like eight or nine or 10 shades of this line on my lips so you can see them side by side. I will link that even though it's older because I think all of those shades are still available. So it'd be a great frame of reference for some of my favorites over the years. But I think this lipstick line is great. I've tried a lot. Like I like the NYX round, the NYX lipsticks are pretty good, but I think these are a little bit better. In the shade range, there's so many of that lipstick, it's crazy. So what I'm actually wearing on my lips, this is the only liquid lip I'm gonna mention because it's the only one that I'll still reach for and feel okay about it. I've really moved away from liquid lipsticks. I just, my lips are too, there are too many lines in my lips they're too drying on me. I just, I don't end up enjoying wearing them. And throughout the day, I'm always like looking in the mirror like, ugh, like I just don't like it. So I'm just like, I'm done. I'm done trying, it's, it's fine. This one is actually pretty good. It's the Physician's Formula, the Healthy Lip. This has more of a velvet finish. So it's matte and it's pretty much dry, but there is a little bit, I can't explain it. This is the only shade I still have. I kind of regret, I don't usually regret decluttering things but I kind of regret decluttering. I had other shades of this and I decluttered them and I kind of regret it. Did I say that enough? Jeez, Jessica. This is the shade Vitamin Beat. This was my favorite shade. It's a beautiful kind of berry tone and it's a doe foot. Mm, it's so thin and weirdly moisturizing. I, it, it's reminiscent of the Ofra liquid lipsticks that I loved but this one's a little bit more moisturizing. Story time, real quick. I can't think of liquid lipsticks without continually thinking of the story where people were mad at me and stopped following me because long ago, back when liquid lipsticks were still new, especially, and they were very new to me, I tried the Kat Von D liquid lipstick, and I, in the video, I'm like, oh, actually, I really like this. This is really, you know, wow, it's crazy pigmented, it stays in place. And then like a month-ish, maybe two months, I really don't know the timeline, Later, I tried the Ofra ones and I'm like, oh, like these are way more moisturizing. They do the same thing, but they're not as uncomfortable. They're not as drying. And so then I was like, oh, well now I don't really like the Kat Von D one. So I'd mentioned that in some video. I don't even know what video. And people like, I, I recently learned that so many people were like, that's when I stopped trusting Jessica because I knew she was a liar. I'm like, what? what? I'm like, I changed my mind. Like I tried more. So it just, I literally, have a bad taste in my mouth about like all liquid lipsticks now. And that's one of the reasons. Cause I'm like, people stopped, thought I was lying because I changed my mind. I can't get over that. Jessica, you gotta move on girl. You gotta move on. And I can link the Velour Puffs I was talking about on Amazon. I actually have an Amazon storefront. I just recently like reached out. Amazon reached out to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Fangirling hard over Amazon because I literally am truly addicted. Um, but if you haven't seen my Amazon recommendations videos of like my favorite things I bought on there, I will link that because that was so fun to make. I, that was not spot I mean, that I was just doing just to do for fun. But I now have an Amazon storefront where like, if you click on my link below, it takes you to a page where I've organized like all of my favorite things on Amazon that I've bought over the years. Like, and I have it organized by like makeup and beauty, uh, household stuff I love, um, fashion stuff that I bought on there that I'm like, holy crap, this is an amazing fleece or this is an amazing whatever. Um, all kinds of, I mean, I literally have like 15 different lists of all kinds of stuff that I've tried myself that I love. So I will link that below if you want to check it out, if you're as addicted to Amazon as I am. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did subscribe so that you don't miss my future high end version of this. Um, and if it's already up, I will have the link for that down below. If you're just watching all of them in a row. And if you are interested in seeing my worst of 2018 makeup and beauty, let me know because I would be glad to film that because it's just fun. I love watching those videos. But other than that, I hope you'll come say hi to me on my social media. It is jambeauty89 everywhere and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.